just under, yeah. Just under two years. Okay. What led to the um, your departure from WWE, Fen? Well, it was the final day. All they had me doing was losing and doing stupid things. So the final day, I actually had one of the writers come up to me before the, the event began and told me straight up. He goes, after what I just saw in that office or the production, he goes, if, as a man, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be mad if you quit or if you left. But he wouldn't elaborate as to why. So then they come to us and go, we want you to lose to Drew McIntyre in under 30 seconds. I'm like, that makes no sense. We've been doing good matches all over the place. Why do you want that to happen? Even Drew was pissed off. He's like, why are they doing this? This makes no sense. So I was like, whatever. You know, this is what they're asking. And before I went out there, it did cross my mind to just get in the ring and submit Drew because I knew I could do it. <laughs> but the, the part of me was I still got to be professional because it's not his doing. He doesn't yeah. want this to happen. And yeah. if I do something to hurt him, I'm no better than what these guys are trying to do. True. So I went through with it. And then, like, after the show was over, I was pretty pissed. So I went to the locker room and I spoke with three wrestlers. I know I'm not going to mention the names, but I know exactly who they are. One of them just happened to speak recently, which shows how much of a two-face he really is. So spoke with three wrestlers privately in the locker room saying like, after seeing some shit like this, I should just go into that office and really kick Vince's ass. <laughs> because what's the whole point? Right. I'm the one getting beat up by all these big guys, but I'm the one who's being the attraction. And I'm hearing from guys in management going, this is the same thing that he did to Rey Mysterio. This is the same thing that he did to Eddie Guerrero. And I'm thinking like, I'm not them. Why right. is he getting away with this and nobody's saying anything? Oh, that's right, because he's got everyone by the balls by their money. Yeah. So yeah. me, I'll, I'll cut that whole process out real quick. So I spoke privately with three people. Like, I should just go storm that office right now and hand him his ass. Two days later, Laurenitis calls me up and goes, yeah, we know we're, you're not where you want to be. And from the plans that we have, it's, uh, it's not likely you're going to be anywhere near where you want to be. So it's going to be best for us to go our separate ways so you can get your release. So when Laurenitis first mentioned me getting a match, he did bring up to Batista. He goes, I don't want to hire him if there's no plans. So Johnny, as much as everyone hates him and as much as everyone wants to say bad things about him because of their experience, he actually was trying to warn me in advance from whatever he knew from Vince. And when he explained it at the end, you're not going to be anywhere you reasonably want to be anytime soon. So right. it's probably best for you to go. Yeah. And all he asked was, please don't talk badly about the company, which I didn't. And he goes, just say you asked your, for your release. So that's what I did because he actually showed me that respect from the beginning and upheld it towards the end. Yeah. So I was getting my severance pay for 90 days. I wasn't going to badmouth them because they were honoring what they said. Yep. And then after the, the contract obligation was done, then I do an interview with Dave Lagana, who happened to jump to TNA, and I told him. I was like, I never asked for my release. They fired me. And to show you the quality of that company, they fired me two days before Christmas. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So if I was the one that the audience, their paying customer, supported, and that's how you treat me in public, where you got me getting beaten up by these fucking these seven dudes on national television without telling me, and you try to make it seem like it was a part of the show, I went into that locker room after that, and the minute I walked into that locker room, because they had us squared off uh, from the, the main roster, there was only six guys in that, lo in that locker room because it was all the NXT guys, and those six dimed out the first one. They go, oh, he was the one who hit you, and Johnny told us early in the day, but we weren't supposed to tell you. So the minute I walked into that locker room, all these big dudes were real quick, to be like it wasn't us we're just so, doing it as we're told uh -huh. they're doing it to maintain their jobs so they they proved that you know these guys you can't trust them you can't rely on them mm -hmm. these guys are going to do whatever they're told 
It's no different than World War II. I was just doing my job. Right. All right, we know what to do with those guys. Yeah. But again, I'm this small. So what on earth would promote this level of fear? Because I'm not walking around like, yeah, I'm going to fuck you up. I've been cool with everybody. I've been the one to help everybody that I've come across. The only thing I can think of is the fact that, oh, that one right there, that's the truth. We yeah. can't afford him getting in charge here. Yeah. 